Hey guys, I wanted to make an update on a project I've been working on. Uh, I haven't worked on it for a while, so I'll just give you a quick overview of how far I've gotten. As you can see on this board, including that, I have a Teensy 3. Last time I used a Teensy 2. This one has more RAM, so it's just easier to work with. I have a real-time clock with a backup battery, and it also has some uh, EP RAM on it, so I could write to it and save information. Uh, this thing is actually going to be used to track the sun's position throughout the day and it's going to move a platform which will always be aligned to the sun. So I have the clock and I'm going to use the memory on there to store information that the user enters. I have the TNC keypad. It's hooked up. The code just doesn't do anything. An LCD with an SD card. The LCD will be the main user interface. Right now it's just a white screen and I don't have it integrated yet. I mean I had some example code running but right now since we're working on the final version it's not doing anything yet. An SD card where I store database files which I look up and reference uh, data from and a digital compass which is going to be used for detecting the actual orientation of the platform. So as the sun moves throughout the sky I get a reading of the azimuth and then I'm going to use a digital compass on that platform to match the angle. So just a little overview of the hardware. This is pretty much all the hardware that's going to be on there. Just a screen, storage. I guess I could use the storage instead of the built-in RAM on there, but oh well. Keypad, backup battery, and there's also going to be a motor, speed controller, and power supply for all this. And it's all going to be in one platform. Now let me show you real quick what it actually does. It's actually not that quick anyway. Here's all the code. And I'll show you all my resources in a second. So right now, it's initialized. It's got the SD card initialization done and the zip code. And this will be done on the little screen and via the keypad once it's all ready to go. So this is just for prototyping cylinder and my zip code. And hit enter. And right now, I just have a little uh, loading dots. It's going to take about two minutes to actually load. Because the, I'll show you real quick, the actual database file with all the zip codes is pretty massive. And if you could see real quick, the resource I got it from is uh, these guys, biotel.com, whoever the hell they are. And they have a link on here that provides the database with all the information they did. There's some other information I'm not using, so I'm just uh, storing the information that I actually need. I have to format it in a specific way so I could actually access it on the Arduino in a, as efficiently as it possibly could. So if you see at the file, the first five digits are the zip code, the camera focus. The next ten digits are the latitude, then the longitude, then the time zone relative to GMT, I think, the city, and the state. Now the city and the state aren't really used for the algorithm, it's just a user confirmation when they enter the zip code, so they get a verification that they entered in the right zip code. And if you see real quick, this file is massive. So it takes the Arduino quite a little bit of a while to actually get through all these entries because I parse the number, check it, now go to the next one, parse it, check it, and it just keeps doing that throughout the entire file. Actually, let me see real quick, be able to tell you how many. Uh, entries there actually are. Let's see, there are 43,191 entries in this text file, so that's why it takes so long for the Arduino to actually pull the file. As you can see, they're still counting off dots. Scroll bar is moving a little bit <laughs> each time. Look, well, it's about halfway. That's when it gets done. Now, the reason it's taking so long is just because my entry is towards the end of the list. So right around 75% down the list. So if you're, you could rearrange this, you could invert the order, you could put the cities that you use the most at the top of the list and it'll find really fast. But just for now, this will work. All right, we have results. So if you look at the screen, once it focuses, it says zip code found. It gives you the latitude, the longitude, the time zone, the city, the state, and it starts tracking the sun. So it's first it's giving you time format, which is going to be on the display. 
if it ever focuses again. Uh, let's see here. Month, day, year, and then hour, minute, seconds, and then the sun's zenith, and the sun's azimuth. If we're going to focus, I actually see it going uh, parts of a degree every second or so. Focus. No, on focus. But it's moving about 0 0.01 degrees every second. Now the algorithm I'm actually using for this came off this site, which is nrel.gov. You have to register, and here's some information about their notice and license and yada yada, but these are the files that I'm using. Actually, I'm going to pull up one of those, because... Uh, those files, there's a lot of configuration stuff you could do on them, which I haven't uh, done because I have no idea what they mean. Let me pull them up real quick. So here's all the different inputs you have on the algorithm to give you your uh, the sense positions, the year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and I am putting in all of those. So those are accurate. The delta T, which is some number, you can read the description, time zone, which I'm also putting into it, longitude, latitude, those are also accurate to five decimal places. Um, elevation, again, I put zero, I take it this is a sea level. Not sure you could tweak it some more if you want more precise results. Pressure, temperature, slope, azimuth rotation atmospherical refraction, and then the function type. So there's a lot of parameters you could tweak here. I have no idea what they do, so I just left them either default or put them to zero, like the slope I put it to zero. So if you want a more accurate uh, zenith or whatever other stats that you can output, you could tweak these values. But uh, so far from what it's uh, giving me, real quick, we verify. Let's just take a timestamp down here. Let me copy to my clipboard. Give me a second here. It started working this with one hand. Now let me reset the process so it stops. As you can see, it just keeps giving a log every one second increments. I could tweak it to whatever I'd want, but let me copy that timestamp. Now if it'll get in focus, right here it says current Time is, uh, the date is 2-26-2013, and time is 12-53-11, and it's telling me the sun zenith is 47.77, and the uh, azimuth is 193.11. Now, on Google, I've used two different uh, websites to verify my calculations. This is one of them, Sun Earth Tools. And if we go back to the beginning, the camera won't focus with a damn, but you could see here the... Latitude is 38.4699, and on here it rounded up to 38.47007, and then the longitude is negative 90.321, and then on here it got negative 90.32167. So these are pretty accurate. I actually put in the exact ones that I had in my original code, and the site just rounded off. I have no idea what this location is. This is just what I got out of the database file zip code to coordinate mapping. So I have no idea where, what that place is. And if you want more accurate readings specifically to where you are, you can input your own uh, coordinates into this program and it'll give you more accurate information. Just to verify the date 2013 to 26. Now the time is different. The time on the timestamp we took earlier is 1253. So we'll match it on here. 12. 53 time zone is uh, GMT minus 6 which is what time zone the Arduino is running the same thing hit execute and then let's verify our readings on here it says the elevation is 42.22 and the azimuth is 193.04 degrees well if we look at our Arduino return the azimuth is 193.11 degrees so we're off by about 0 0.07 degrees and like I said you could tweak those parameters and that uh, 
algorithm if you want it to be more accurate. And then the zenith, which is 47.77, and elevation on here is 42.22. Again, those are probably all those parameters that you could tweak if you want more precise. But for this project, the only thing that matters is the azimuth. So that's accurate enough within 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 degrees. So. But like I said, if you want, you could tweak it to be more precise. So I just wanted to show the project, the progress, and the next steps are pretty simple. It is just, instead of using the console, do it all on the keypad and screen, and then just stick a motor on it and put it inside a box. And that'll be the project. All right, thanks for watching.